Hi everyone, Scott here from Hawkward Systems to talk about why SolidWorks Composer is the best tool for developing technical documentation by utilizing your existing 3D models. Really? The answer is simple. Composer is the best tool for the job because it's 80% faster than the traditional method of making assembly instructions, operation manuals, parts lists, exploded views, website images, and even videos. Composer's true value is that it is associated back to SolidWorks. So any model changes also update anything developed in Composer. It also works with most 3D models. If it's in 3D, there's a way to get it into Composer. It's also twice as fast as anything available on the market designed for technical documentation. And Composer was specifically designed for assembly instructions. Once those instructions are developed, you can choose to export as printed, video, or even interactive publications. Okay, so let's jump into why we're here. I have a video that covers the development of assembly instructions using the traditional method of taking 3D models and converting them into a format that is compatible with a word processing program, such as Word, Publisher, and InDesign. This video is sped up three times its original speed, and while this is playing, I'm going to develop the same instructions using Composer in real time and actually erase this video that is playing at three times its original speed. So, we all know that SOLIDWORKS is the best tool for 3D model design. However, it is not intended to be used for development of technical documentation, and that is where Composer comes in. Developing documentation in Composer completely eliminates the need to use multiple programs outside of the SOLIDWORKS family. There is no more need to create and manage multiple configurations, taking screenshots, making time-consuming renderings, and going around taking photos of your products while they're actually being produced. Some of you might be thinking that I need to get started because this video is already playing and it's at three times normal speed. Well, I'm not too concerned because I know Composer's 80% faster, but I would like to keep this recording under 10 minutes, so let's go ahead and get started. So here's Composer, and as you can see, there's an assembly tree that's going to look just like it does in SOLIDWORKS. We can make sub-assembly selections, isolate them, Composer automatically zooms to those selections, and we can go ahead and we can change things like the position, rendering styles, or anything that we want. Composer models are easily repositioned with just simple mouse gestures of rotate and zoom in and out, and we don't have to worry about actually modifying the original SOLIDWORKS or model content, because everything done in Composer is totally separate. Making selections of movements are as simple as selecting items, and telling them to move. There's no need to ever having to create configurations, exploded views, and then with the tedious process of going back and trying to reposition those exploded views by editing the features. In Composer, you can always grab them, reposition by dragging, and you're done. All right, so now I'm going to set this up to create some exploded lines. So by selecting some more items, moving them out from the model, I give myself plenty of room to throw some lines in here select some parts that I want to attach the lines to, and just simply tell the lines to go back to where the parts originally came from. We'll automatically snap them there, and uh, we just have to simply go into the properties and make some adjustments. So things like color, end conditions, and if we want the lines to be on top of the models or go through them in, uh, in 3D. Okay, so this is a good time to jump over to the SOLIDWORKS video. And as you can see, Composer is actually ahead at this point. In SOLIDWORKS, we're still trying to position the components for the exploded view. And uh, to do this with configurations, it can be very tedious. Because SOLIDWORKS is a 3D mechanical design tool, it's not intended to be used for making things like technical documentation. So we really have to do a lot of suppressing, hiding, and then after we're done, we actually have to render these out as images in order to export them from SOLIDWORKS, thus breaking the associativity. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back over to Composer, and I'm gonna start hiding some things just so I can clean it up and start my authoring content. So here, let's go ahead and throw some balloons onto the drawing. So go to our authoring balloons, and uh, just kind of stick them right on there. You can see they automatically populate and the build materials automatically adjust as well as we're able to develop all 2D authoring elements directly in the same program. Traditional methods would require the use of an additional image editing program such as Photoshop. Since we can develop all content in Composer, it eliminates the need to run our images through multiple programs. This allows us to keep everything linked up and associative back to the SOLIDWORKS model. When it comes to creating the step-by-step -step processes, 
It's as simple as telling the parts to go home. They know where they belong, and you simply create a snapshot of each part in location. I'm now wrapping up the entire process of Composer by selecting parts, telling them to go home, and creating what's called a view, or what I like to call a snapshot. 2D elements can be added at any time, regardless if the snapshots have been created or not. At this point, the process in Composer is way ahead, at less than a third of the time spent. So switching back to the traditional method, you can see that we're actually taking these 2D images that have been exported from SOLIDWORKS and bringing them into Photoshop. By doing this, we can now create the authoring content that we're able to develop directly in Composer without the use of a third-party application. So also take a look at the clocks right now. We are under four minutes in Composer and that process is way ahead compared to over 17 minutes using the traditional process or the old school method. I'm now switching back over to Composer and let's wrap this up. All right, so now all I have to do is clean some things up, maybe resize the bomb, hide some items, and then just simply go in and uh, create my last view. So I'm really happy with the way this is looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a PDF. The process is very simple. And keep in mind, this PDF can be updated at any time when the original model is updated. All right, so there we are. I just did the exact process using Composer compared to how these documents are currently being developed and numbers don't lie. The Composer process took just over four minutes. We compare that to almost 20 minutes using traditional methods. So I'm sure you math people out there are saying, hey, that's only 78% faster. And you're right. However, let's take this into consideration. When procedures are developed in Composer, you get to pick the output you want. The traditional method gives you a printed document. Composer also gives you a printed document, but it gives you so much more than that gives you batch image output for use in any publication you like. And keep in mind, these images are still associated back to SOLIDWORKS. Composer also gives you animation and vector or interactive output. And the process is as simple as it can be. Simply drag the steps you already made into the timeline and then save into the format you want to publish. And that is why Composer will save you 80% of your time compared to how you're developing all your technical documentation that you're doing today.